Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce someone who I believe sets the standard for the <coughs> progressive elected leadership in this country. Him and his brother have really kind of set the stage for what's possible in the West. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I guess you'd have to be a gun-toting environmentalist to understand what I mean. <laughs> I tell people that, they say, how can you be a gun-toting gun environmentalist? Well, all you got to do is love Colorado. And I know that the Senator does. He's a great friend to AFE, to all of America. Please let me introduce to you Senator Ken Salazar. Uh, you know, we are gathered here today at uh, the beginning of this uh, very important and historical day in Colorado because we are on a mission. We are on a mission to end the reign of Bush Cheney and we are going to be able to do it here in Colorado when we <coughs> elect Mark Udall to the United States Senate. Yeah. Mark Udall is a true son of the West. And uh, he is the kind of leadership that we need in the United States Senate to help us make sure that we get this country back on the right track. And uh, we are fortunate uh, that uh, Hal, the Colonel, uh, Colonel Bidlack, is also running for the 5th Congressional District because we're going to make sure that at the end of the day, Doug Lamborn comes back to Colorado Springs and we're going to take him out of the nation's capital. Thank you for being here. Quick word to uh, my brothers and, and sisters in labor and to uh, those of you who are here, a part of the veterans community. You know, for too long, for the last seven years, uh, the labor community has not been welcome at all in the White House. You know that. Uh, what they say in the White House is if you are associated with the workers, you should not even darken the door of the White House. And that's the kind of message that we've been getting from George Bush and Dick Cheney. Well, we're going to change that this November when we elect Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton to be President of the United States of America. Woo! But in order for us to be able to make that change, we also need to make sure that we grow both in the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, and that's why the eyes of America really are going to be focused on what happens here in Colorado. It's because we have nine electoral votes at stake. It's because we have the U.S. Senate at stake, and it's because we have key congressional district races that we're going to be working on very, very hard. I want to make uh, two quick uh, comments. Uh, uh, one is about uh, veterans. You know, we uh, have, uh, in the last few days, uh, had a, uh, a couple of votes in the Senate, and we'll have a couple more coming up this next week, with regard to whether or not the veterans who have served in the post-9-11 world should receive the GI educational benefits that we have put together in a package that would allow them to be treated by this nation in fulfillment of the promise that this nation makes to its veterans. Now, the White House and John McCain have been very opposed to this new GI Bill of Rights, even though my colleague Senator Jim Webb has gone around and has gotten bipartisan cooperation and sponsorship for the bill. We now have almost uh, 60 co-sponsors for the bill, including uh, former Senator John Warner, former Senator Chuck Hagel on the Republican side, and, almost, and all of the Democratic caucus now is behind this bill. We are going to get it done. But the truth is that John McCain opposes the bill because he says that it's too expensive. I don't know how he can say that it's too expensive when we're spending $12 billion a month in Iraq, but we can't take care of our veterans back home. So we are going to change that. For all of you who are part of AFGE, you also know that this administration has been about trying to destroy the federal workforce in America. You know, when I've gone to Iraq, as I have now three times in the last three years, and everywhere that I go, in Iraq or in Afghanistan, and I see the Halliburton contractors, uh, Kellogg, Brown, and Root, and all of these other contractors, you know what this administration has stood for. This administration has stood for the proposition that government and government employees are not good, and that what we ought to do is we ought to privatize the entire system, just like George Bush wanted to privatize Social Security. We're not going to let them do that. And that's one of the choices that we face between McCain on the one side, because he'll continue those policies of privatization, and on the other side, 
Obama Clinton who will make sure that they're standing up for our government employees who work in the trenches on behalf of our nation every day. So there's a lot at stake in this election. There's a lot at stake in this election. And so much of that energy is going to be focused here on Colorado. In 2004, they said that it couldn't be done here, that a Democrat couldn't win here in Colorado. And yet we proved them wrong. There has not been the electoral votes, the nine votes we have here now in this election delivered to a Democratic president, except when Bill Clinton won in uh, 1992, and there was a parole factor in the air. So the Republicans are saying that they are going to be able to pick up all of the nine electoral college votes here in Colorado. Well, I'm telling you, I am working every day, every hour, between now and the time that the polls close in November, to make sure that we deliver those nine electoral votes for a Democratic president for the United States, for my brother, Mark Udall, Mark Udall, a true son of the West, and for the rest of the Colorado congressional delegation, because we need to get our country moving in the right and new direction that will restore the hope and promise of America that brings us here all together. Thank you very, very much.